Welcome back to the perspective, Ambassador. Let's move on. There seems to be a positive uh, outlook coming from and to Indonesia, Spotlight yeah. Indonesia, uh, because of the changes, the reforms that Jokowi is engaged on since he yeah. uh, took office. And how do you think the business community is reacting to this, the British companies, uh, towards yeah. these policies that Jokowi has issued? So there's, there's a good degree of optimism mm -hmm. uh, and a good degree of engagement. Uh, you know, when uh, British investors look at building relationships with a country like Indonesia, they're taking a long-term perspective, actually. Mm -hmm. They're not looking at just the term of this president, but they're looking at the long term. Mm -hmm. And so investing in Indonesia is about the next 20 years, the next 30 years, not just the next three or four years. Right. Of course, the outlook for the next three, four or four years has to be right. Yeah. Uh, but you take the decision on the basis of the long term. On the long term, actually, Indonesia has enormous potential that, that is uncontested. 250 million people, 40% under the age of 25, mm -hmm. uh, very uh, uh, rich natural resources, a geostrategic location, mm -hmm. um, a country that's already made its democratic transition, so you don't have some of the political risk facing other countries mm -hmm. in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, there remains untapped potential. That so, so there's enormous potential for the long term, mm -hmm. right? Um, Indonesia is today's 16th largest economy in the world yeah. on, on you know, a whole range of, of uh, 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 measures. It's going to end up somewhere between number 7 and number 10 in mm -hmm. the next 15 years. Mm -hmm. But that journey, that, is it number 7 or number 10, is about the potential. Yeah. And it's really what the government does in the next three or four years to set the trajectory mm -hmm. that will determine whether, in fact, Indonesia ends up just about breaking into the top ten mm -hmm. or actually becoming an Asian powerhouse. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm often fond, fond of saying to, to my friends that I think the future of Asia depends not only on India and China, about which we talk all the time, but actually Indonesia too, given its 40% stake in the ASEAN and the role of ASEAN as a third node of growth. Mm -hmm. So in the Asian century, I think Indonesia's got an enormous role to play. But is there's it a lot up to that challenge, though? But there's a lot to do to unlock yeah. that potential. Um, you know, we've just had President Jacobi in London in, mm -hmm. in April. This followed the visit of Correct. Prime Minister Cameron to Jakarta last July uh, and my foreign minister to Jakarta last February, yeah. in February 2015. So we've had a real uptick in our, uh, our, our relationship. It was very interesting listening to uh, the president in London. He, he, of course, had a couple of hours with the mm -hmm, prime minister, mm -hmm. but he also had a whole range of meetings with the business community, with mm -hmm. the finance community, given that London is a world financial center. Mm -hmm. uh, he made a whole ro range of other kind of site visits and so on. He had two days. We had an excellent program. Mm -hmm. But throughout that uh, time, the words that the president coming back to about to describe his ambition for Indonesia was to build an open and a competitive economy. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really interesting. Okay, those were, you know, he didn't just want growth, he didn't want more jobs, he wanted an open and a competitiveness econ a competitive economy. Mm -hmm. And he actually explained very smartly why that was important. It was important for Indonesia. Important for growth, mm -hmm. important for jobs, but actually important also because he believed that openness and competitiveness would deliver better services mm -hmm. to Indonesian consumers. And he had stories to tell, to right. explain how in Indonesia openness and competitiveness had helped to achieve that outcome. So I think the president has a very clear sense of the direction in which he wants to take the country. Mm -hmm. I think his agenda is right. The focus on economic deregulation is absolutely right. It's, it's what I hear from business people whenever I meet them, exactly Indonesians, Brits, Americans, you know, Malaysians, whoever. Yeah. The first thing that they all want to talk about is deregulation, more mm -hmm. consistent, more mm -hmm. transparent, more stable regulation. The second thing they all want to talk about is infrastructure, mm -hmm. because the cost of doing business here are too high. And actually, the third thing that they all talk about is human resources, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they all talk about human resources because fundamentally, you can have the demographic dividend, you can have uh, the natural resources, but long-term competitiveness rests on your talent. Yeah. So in our partnership between the UK and Indonesia, you know, we're looking at a whole range of things that we're doing on the economic agenda, on security, and so on. But we're very f squarely focused on three issues. How do we support the deregulation drive? Mm -hmm. How do we support an infrastructure? And how do we, Indonesia, invest and build its human capital for the long term? Mm -hmm. Education. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, zooming out a little bit on in, uh, from Indonesia, you're saying how important Indonesia is not just for uh, Southeast Asia uh, in terms of its economic integration that's kicked off last year. 
but it seems that uh, uh, it's a long way to go for 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 Indonesia. How, how, how important is it the 600 million market uh, for the European, the Western uh, economies, for yeah. uh, Japan, for China? How this economic block to come up and 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 take center stage? Look, you know. Um the ASEAN is a really, really important node for future world growth. Mm. Okay, uh, mm. as I said earlier, Indi you know we'd spend a lot of time talking about India and China, right. but actually the ASEAN and with Indonesia at the heart of it is the third leg, the, third, to be the third. Uh, third stool for mm -hmm. the future of the Asian economy, the future of the world economy. Right. Okay, um, so it's hugely important. You know, my instructions from London are very clear. Mm -hmm. We need to work closely with Indonesia because our future depends on uh, strong economic and political relationships as an open economy, because we're mm -hmm. a very open economy, a very open polit political society. Mm -hmm. But you know, our future depends on great relationships with Indonesia and with the ASEAN. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the ASEAN's been going a long time, and a lot of people criticize the ASEAN for going slowly. Mm -hmm. um, and it's different. It's not the European Union. I keep t having to remind my colleagues of that. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's got its own characteristics. It operates by consensus. It operates at its own pace. But actually, if you zoom out and take a long-term perspective, ASEAN has made a great deal of progress in the last 30 years. And I think in the next 30 years, it will make a lot more progress still. I'll, I'll take a break. We'll we have to take okay. a break on that uh, when we come back after the short break.